what is going on? I know a lot of you have been asking how to get into murals and the mural spaces and how do you write a mural proposal letter or request you know, a business owner or a developer or a building owner about using their wall to, you know, to do some artwork on. So that is something that we're going to get in today. But before we get into that, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you're notified whenever I do videos like this. So let's get into it. So getting walls is something that's, you know, sometimes a mystery, but I'm going to help you demystify that today. A lot of the murals that I have done sort of over the past five, six years, most of them have been self-initiated. Most of them have been sort of going out of my way and introducing myself to business owners and developers and building owners and just people in general who have spaces, own spaces or lease spaces, and seeing how I can sort of uh, create artwork in those spaces. A lot of times it's a wall that I like or a building that I really like and I want to put artwork in there I sort of drive by and say I envision my artwork being on that building so I sort of do the sort of the steps to actually go out there and make that happen so a lot of artists are really sometimes asking how do you do that how do you sort of go about that so being as professional as possible is super important that is why I always do a proposal or a letter when I sort of make first contact and that basically is you know putting together a sort of proposal that has a couple different sections the first section is the executive summary and the executive summary is basically letting that individual know you know why are you contacting them and it has the, those burning questions the who what when where and why and how so who who's contacting them or who will be on the project with you um, sort of creating your art? What, what is this project about? What is your mural about? What is your style about? Things like that. When, when do you plan to sort of actually activate uh, the installation or when do you plan to finish all those wins where you know where on their space or where on their wall do you want to actually do the mural why why do you want to do this why do you think it will add value to their space why do you want to in even just like send that proposal how how do you plan to sort of get this thing done in terms of just like some budgets or you know logistically how do you plan to get it done answering those questions doesn't have to be in those orders but you want to make sure you sort of hit on that in different points so that's section is going to be one to two paragraphs you have to understand that these are business owners and building developers and building owners and you know you're sending them a letter so you can't make it really big you can't you know bog them down in text so make it really brief hitting hitting on those different points you know one to two paragraph is all you need so that they can get the point and then usually I'll have a mock-up because after I sort of tell them what I want uh, from them or what I want to do I always have a mock-up so that they can envision it themselves because one thing you really have to learn is how to get this abstract idea that you have in your head for their space how do you communicate that to someone so the best way to do that is with a mock-up so I always do some sort of mock-up of a space to sort of just show them exactly what I'm planning or what I'm thinking sometimes it's just taking a picture or some old work or the design I have for that space and just photoshopping that into sort of the section of the wall that I want to paint or I'm asking to paint. So the mock-up is really important after you sort of do that sort of uh, executive summary section, you know, hitting on those different points and sort of give them something visual to sort of, you know, sink their teeth into and really visualize that. You have to give them some, some sort of eye candy so that they stay interested and they're sort of more curious about, you know, you know what this mural and street art project is all about after that i usually include a logistics section basically a logistics section is just talking about sometimes the time frame and some of your needs so the time frame you know when do you plan to install or what 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 is your desired date for installing and starting the project and you know how long does it take you to usually do it do you do it on you know certain days because you have work or do you only do it on the weekends you know all those different things about the timing of you installing that piece and how long it's going to take and the final end date or the completion date and then I also have a section on the needs in the logistics so the needs are basically do you need a drop sink do you need electricity do you need some of the cars in the parking lot to be uh, sort of moved away or you need to block up some stuff or you know do you need to sort of rent 
pieces of equipment and leave it at their space or can you leave stuff overnight in their building or whatever so really sometimes all these different needs will be different for different uh, projects and sort of uh, proposals so you just got to figure out what you need for that project and sort of communicate that to the owner or the person you're talking to sometimes they can't meet some of those needs it's just expressing to them hey this is something that I would really really uh, love for you know for it to be addressed that's you know because they can help you out sometimes with resources if you just express that to them after that I usually put the budget uh, a lot of my self-initiated murals that I get, I self-fund, or I have a grant, or I find a sponsor. There's some sort of way of funding it or sort of creating it without the help of the building owner or the business or the you know the the developer. Mainly because if I'm self-initiating it, I have to think about you know it's going to be an expense on their part if I ask them for money. And a lot of times when I self-initiate these projects and pay for it myself, a lot of times they'll chip in whatever they can because they just feel the need to sort of help out the project as much as possible. Sometimes they don't. Um, but the thing is, you know, you're finding out a way to get them to say yes. To get them to say yes to a project, you know, sometimes you have to sort of take the hit when it comes to the expenses and the finances and figure out how to get, you know, another partnership or entity or a grant to actually fund that project. And there's a ton of grants out there that will sometimes help out uh, your efforts in terms of adding public art to public spaces or to private spaces that are that can be seen by the public. So don't ever sort of let uh, sort of the idea that, you know, they're not gonna pay for it, so I'm not gonna do it, into your head. You always gotta figure out how to get this sort of funded or paid for uh, without their sort of um, inclusion into the budget because, you know, like I said, you're trying to get them to say yes. It's a lot harder when they have to sort of dish out funding and money for it, especially, you know, now that a lot of businesses are hurting, it's going to be a lot more difficult to do that and have them sort of come out of pocket for something that they didn't even expect. So you have to think about that part uh, when you're sort of putting together the budget. So a lot of times my self-initiated projects are self-funded with my own tools and resources and equipment. And a lot of times I have extra paint that I can use in my studio and the walls that I'm asking for aren't that difficult to sort of, you know, use a ladder on or, you know, I can just use a step ladder or I don't need a ladder at all. I just need access to the space. So a lot of times, you know, you can just use extra paint that you have. So I usually have a budget in there. And if you're funding it yourself, just explain to them that they have no obligation to pay for it, uh, that you're sort of paying for everything and you're paying for the paint, you're paying for your supplies, and you just need access to that space because like I said, that usually really helps out and gets them over the hump for them to say yes. And after the budget, I always include samples. So sample works of previous murals that, that I've done, and you don't have to include everything. Usually you want to include the work that's relevant. So the work that is in the style that you're trying to do on their space, or recent work that they may have seen around town. So including the works uh, that are most relevant will help them visualize, you know, the mock-up that you did, how will it look in the end? How will the end product sort of add value to their space? So you wanna really, really focus on including those samples. So like I said, that they envision the same thing that you're envisioning um, for that street art project or that mural project. And samples really help out uh, when it comes to, like I said, just having them sort of get inside your head and see exactly what you're seeing for that space. So hopefully this helped out. This is basically how I do mural proposals for walls that I self-initiate and sort of reach out to these business owners and developers and building owners when, you know, they have no idea sometimes who I am, sometimes they do, and I just reach out to them because I see a space in the public eye when I'm driving around. I'm saying, hey, I would love to add artwork to that space. Let me figure out a way to communicate that to whoever runs or owns that space and figure out how I can go about doing that. So like I said, a lot of my projects in the community 
um, are self-initiated and done this way and they're also self-funded not all of them sometimes I have sponsors and partners that will help fund it and sometimes afterwards you know they'll sort of uh, kick back for supplies or sort of some expenses or they have some resources and equipment that I can use but a lot of the projects that I do are sort of self-initiated and self-funded and this is exactly how I go about initiating that contact after they sort of get back to you things may change and you know you really just have to sort of play it by ear because just the proposal is one thing you know how you sort of uh, go about you know working with that individual is another thing uh, so definitely you know use this as a starting point and change it up however you need because every city and sort of uh, state and you know town will be different every neighborhood will be different because you sometimes may need a permit in some places and you know adding that to the proposal may be something you have to do so everything is going to be different uh, basically use this as a template and go about sort of making that first initial step and as you go on um, it will become easier and understand you're not going to get a yes every time I always say that you know I'm only looking for 20% of the people that I ask to even show interest so when you think about it that way you understand that you're going to get a lot of no's I get a lot of no's uh, but you're just looking for that one yes to sort of help you in terms of getting your work out there and sort of helping you sort of get more uh, uh, murals done, street art done, so that you're just growing as an artist and you're sort of interacting with different spaces and neighborhoods. Definitely make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you're notified whenever I do videos. And if you have a question or a comment, make sure you throw that in the comment section uh, because those questions really help me out in terms of gauging, you know, what videos I need to make to help the artist community out. So make sure you do that, you stay active, and I will see you next time. Peace.